Hi, okay, I'm going to continue with uh, what I started uh, yesterday in a previous video about the people or the types of personality that may affect us negatively and that uh, even though we want to help them um, it might be ineffective or even harmful for us to do so and uh, to change tactics or to retreat um, or they will drag us down to where they are. So you remember that in the last video I um, talked about, this is according to Stoic philosophy which as I said it was uh, Greek and then he moved on to Rome and uh, basically it was still very potent today but it was uh, certainly the two centuries before Christ and the two or three centuries after that was a very powerful philosophy, the Stoic philosophy. It's, um, it's obviously pagan, it's not Christian but it, um, it, it it, it's not anti-Christian in any way, although, of course, Christianity teaches to go much further. But these are certain rules to practice the good life, as I explained yesterday, to have inner peace within yourself and how to manage or how to interact with other human beings who may be very different from you, from us. So yesterday I, I dealt with um, those who refuse to help themselves and we are forever trying to, those who constantly seek um, self-affirmation and approval from others, um, those who engage in self-destructive behavior, um, the manipulators also who will abuse your kindness and your good intentions and then those who are forever negative and everything is always bad and pessimistic. Well I'm going to continue with four more and then at the end I am going to uh, just give you some excerpts of the uh, proverbs or the, uh, the, the sayings that the three main philosophers I told you this yesterday, Epictetus, Seneca and the Emperor Marcus Aurelius, uh, just a few things that I, I took note of that uh, I, will, I will share those with you at the end. Okay, so let's go with the sixth. <clears throat> those who are resistant to change and you want to help and they don't want your help, okay? Now, they refuse to change their opinion even in the face of clear evidence to the contrary. And so we find that um, these people, despite, despite uh, good advice perhaps, despite irrefutable evidence, choose to remain in denial or ignorance, um, not appealing necessarily to reason and open-mindedness on our part is going to be a good thing. Um, these two things are important and remind us that we cannot force someone to change if they are not ready to change, if they are not ready to do so. Not only they are not willing, they cannot be willing if they are not ready to do so. Imagine a situation where you are trying to tell, to help someone with uh, reason and evidence and information, resources, advice to improve their situation or their understanding of something, but this person rejects, systematically rejects everything that you propose and you put on the table. This can be frustrating for you, it can be exhausting, especially if you devote a lot of time and energy without seeing any positive results. In this situation, it is important for you to come to the conclusion that even though your intention is good, 
your help will not be. What this person needs at this time in his life is to hand to handle these situations. It it is important. They they need more time. They it is important for you to practice patience and understanding. Sometimes people need time to process information. We not all process information at the same pace. Uh, to make decisions for ourselves. So it is important for you in this situation to actually respect the pace or the rhythm, let us say, in their decision making, in that process of decision making. Even if it does not necessarily correspond to your expectations. Besides, it is crucial to keep in mind that each person is actually responsible himself, herself, for their own path in life. So accept that you have done your best and leave it alone. Let go of the need to change this other person. What you have to do is to preserve your own inner peace and your energy. And actually reflect also at the same time on your own motivation, the motivation that you have yourself. Ask yourself why it is so important for you to change the other person's opinion. Well, it could be because you see he's totally wrong and want, and, and, and want to tell him, uh, bring up the truth. Yes, that's one possibility, but there may be others. For his well-being or to satisfy a personal need for success, is it, is it for his well-being or to satisfy your own personal need for success, to, to, to show that you are right? So introspection and reflection may help to clarify your intention and adjust your approach. That is the sixth. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Hold on, let me, yes, yes, I'm, I'm looking at my notes. Now, another type. The person who is constantly in conflict or disagreement with everyone and everything. Whatever it is, I'm against it. That is, seems to be their motto. This uh, people always seem to be in quarrels and disagreements with themselves and everybody else. When we wish to help them, we might be tempted to intervene. But choose your battles wisely, recognizing that when your intervention is not desirable or productive, uh, you're going to you're not going to get anywhere for example a person who seems to attract or create conflict everywhere attract conflict it is not going to be only exhausting but also drag you into forever polemics and conflicts your help will not be effective your inner peace is precious. Protect it and don't throw it away. Practice here restraint and prudence. Before interfering or even intervening, let's say, evaluate if your help will really be beneficial or if it could make matters worse. Sometimes the best, the best thing is not to act and allow the parties involved 
to resolve their differences for themselves. It is important to note, to develop a deep understanding of the dynamics involved in conflict. And this could involve appreciating the underlying motives and emotions and issues from all the other parties involved. And with this understanding, each person with different motives, um, when you understand that, you can offer a more informed perspective if you want to intervene or you may decide to on the other hand stay back if the situation requires it. Besides it is essential for you to cultivate your own resilience and your own conflict management skills and this involves learning how to remain calm and centered even in the face of very tense situations. Remember your inner peace and balance should not depend on external circumstances, but on your ability to remain in control of your reactions. Do not forget either your own personal example the example that you might give by showing how to manage disagreements and conflicts in a constructive and peaceful manner. And so you might be able, by doing this, to inspire others to adopt a similar approach. And it will create, therefore, a more harmonious environment for everyone. Another type of personality is uh, the type of person we should, uh, th that we're trying to help is the person who is always indifferent or apathetic to their own learning or understanding. They seem indifferent to their personal growth and to the opportunities or even their own well-being, we think. So our instinct, is, uh, our instinct may lead us to want to motivate them or to inspire them. But is our help wanted here? Is it useful? Consider a person who is satisfied with the status quo, whatever that might be, in their own personal lives, in politics, whatever it might be. Uh, and he's indifferent to everything that's happening around him. Trying to persuade him otherwise can often come up against the wall of indifference which can be also frustrating and dismaying and discouraging. So the Stoics would say, accept people as they are. Don't try to change them according to your own ideals. This is something that the Emperor Marcus Aurelius wrote extensively ab about. Practice acceptance and letting go. Accept that everyone has his own path and his own pace of growth and discernment. Your role is not to force change, but to be available and supportive if and when that person decides to seek your help. It is important to concentrate on your own development rather than spending your energy trying to change someone who is indifferent. So concentrate on being perhaps a positive example to others. What is important really is to create an inspiring and motivating environment around you. Sometimes being a good example is or will be in time sufficient. Remember that everyone has their own lessons to learn, their own role. And 
your role is to respect each person's journey. So concentrate your energy on what can be most beneficial for yourself and for others. Helping others is a virtue, but it is just as important when our help may be to know when our help may be ineffective or even harmful. These are some of the other personalities. Let me... Um, I have some notes here. Let me tell you some of the... Uh, I just picked them at random, but uh, from the books that I showed you yesterday. But this one is from uh, just three or four very short ones from Epictetus, who I told you was a slave, learned how to deal, learned how to deal with life, and then founded his own school of philosophy. Some of the things he said. These are fun. He who is discontented with what he has and to what has been granted to him by fortune is one who is ignorant of the art of living. But he who bears that in a noble spirit and makes reasonable use of all that come from, from it deserves to be regarded as a good man. That's one. Another one. When we are invited to a banquet, we take and accept whatever it is offered to us, whatever is served. And if anyone should ask his host to serve him something different, uh, to serve him fish or cakes, he would be thought eccentric or even rude. And yet, in the wider world, we ask the gods for things they decided not to give us irrespective of the many things that they have actually given us. As Epictetus the slave. One more. This is, this is about passive-aggressive, we call it now, passive-aggressive passive people. There are some people who can be ill-tempered in a gentle way and who quite calmly and as though without anger do everything that those who are carried away by their anger would do. We must be on our guard, then, against the error of such people as something far worse than becoming furiously angry. For those who fly into a passion soon feel their fill of vengeance, but those others prolong it for a considerable time like people who are suffering from a light fever. Another one. I like this. <laughs> Those whose bodies are in good condition can endure both heat and cold. And so likewise, those whose souls are in fine condition can endure anger and grief and every other emotion. Before you attack anyone in an aggressive and threatening manner, remember to tell yourself beforehand that you are not a wild animal, and then you will never commit any violent act, and will thus live, live your life without having to repent or be called to account. That's Epictetus. Okay, just a few from Seneca, the philosopher. This is from the letter 105, which is on f facing the world with confidence. And this is a very, very short summary. He's writing to a friend and he says, I shall now tell you certain things to which you should pay particular attention in order to live well and safely. Reflect on things that goad man into destroying man. You will find that, among others, they are hope, envy, hatred, fear, and contempt. Contempt is the least harmful. I'm summarizing terribly here. Contempt is the least harmful, for he who despises you will injure you 
but then will pass on having done so. Envy, you will escape it if you do not force yourself into public view to be admired or to boast of your possessions if you understand how to enjoy things privately. On hatred, hatred comes either from running foul of others, and this can be avoided by not provoking anyone, or else it is uncalled for, and common sense will help you safe, uh, will keep you safe from this. As to fear, um, as to not being feared, a moderate fortune or power and an easy disposition will guarantee you that men should should uh, know men should not be offended i don't understand my notes men should know that they, that that you cannot be offended but without danger yes those will know that they can offend you, but without danger to themselves. The most important contribution to peace of mind is never to do wrong. Those who lack self-control lead disturbed and tumultuous lives. Their crimes are balanced by their fears, and they are never at ease, for they tremble after their deed and they are embarrassed. Well, not ordinary people are embarrassed. Just hold on a second. Um, they are, um, I mean, if you're a psychopath, obviously you're not going to feel embarrassed. But uh, ordinary people, good people, their conscious, uh, consciousness do not allow them to busy themselves with other matters and continually forces them, compels them to give an answer to themselves. Whoever expects punishment receives it, but whoever deserves it expects it. Where there is an evil conscience, something or other may bring safety, but nothing can bring ease. For even if he is not under arrest, he may soon be arrested. His sleep is troubled. When he speaks of another man's crime, he is conscious of his own, which will appear to him not sufficiently blotted out, not sufficiently hidden from view. A wrongdoer sometimes has the luck to escape, but never the assurance thereof. And then he says, farewell. Okay, so this is my uh, take for, <laughs> for uh, the Stoic philosophy. I will see you very soon. Thank you very much.